Welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Now this session I think is going to be quite amazing. My wife was extremely pleased with the Christmas cards that I produced for her. As a result I got tasked with making all of her birthday cards for next year. I was busy researching and designing um, at, at the first few of these cards when out of the blue I received a message on YouTube from a regular watcher, a guy called Peter Jones, and I really want to mention his name because he's the reason why this session is being run. On the top of this toolbar, beside the preview window, we've got a couple of little buttons and controls which I've not mentioned. I've purposely ignored them because I could not see the purpose of them in this program. Now I use group and ungroup commands all the time while I'm using my CAD system. Young Mr Peter Jones has opened my eyes to the benefits of this grouping and I'm absolutely staggered and amazed and I must pass on this information to you guys out there to make your life simple. Let's start off with one of the cards that I've designed and there it is. Now you might say there's nothing on the screen. If I zoomed out there would be because as a matter of course I always export my files 10 times full size. There is an earlier session about the way that the import command here deals with very small details. So now I overcome that problem by always importing at 10 times full size. And the first thing I do is go up to the top here and I close the lock and I change the 100% to 10%. So I made it 10 times bigger to come in and now I'm shrinking it back to full size. And there we are. What I would ask you to do is to first of all put a marquee round here and go up to your handle control at the top here and you'll see it says cut optimize. Now up to now we've been using cut optimize as a technique for helping to control the cuts. The first thing I want you to do is to go in and remove any ticks that you've got in here on order of layer or inside to outside you can't do anything about this block handle and it doesn't matter about the auto determined start point either. And then we say OK. Now probably from this time onwards unless you get something really special you'll never go up there and use that again because what we're going to show you today is a very powerful technique for making life really really simple. If we go and take a look at the edit cut properties at this moment in time if we take a look down here we shall find that we've dealing with 702 elements on this picture. Now that's a lot of elements to try and fiddle around with. Now most of them I wouldn't as you know. The one thing that I do always want to do is make sure that my outside cut is the last cut and then maybe one or two other special cuts in between but after that I let the program do its own thing and it has got a tendency to jump around all over the place and do all sorts of random things now I've got control. We'll start off with no marquee, no handles. I always want the outside shape as a separate shape which I do last but it doesn't matter here what we're going to do first or last. So first of all I'm going to pick the outside shape and if we look it's turned red and it should be continuous all the way around the outside which it is. I'm going to make that a group. Obviously the lattice work goes all the way around the butterfly so you certainly can't collect it all in one go because if you do look you collect all those pieces of the butterfly as well which we don't want so we just press escape for a minute and what we'll do we will come down here and we'll collect as much as we can without touching the butterfly. The butterfly has remained black so we'll now hold down the shift key and we'll pick up these individually one at a time now but we must hold the shift key down to do this and we can go carefully all the way around the butterfly then we get to this point here and we can put a marquee around I'm still holding the shift key down by the way and there we go now that's a group so we'll now post that up the top there into a group and we do the same for the other side now. Collect as much as we can before we hit the butterfly. And now I can probably come across the bottom there without catching anything. 
I might have missed those few at the middle there so there we go we'll just pick those up okay all the time I'm holding the shift key down while I'm collecting these and they will go into this one group now I can let the shift key go and I can send them up here to the group if you look carefully you'll see that there's a break just at the bottom of the body there and then it goes around the outside of the wing all the way up and down and it stops just at the bottom of the antenna there and there's a break there so that the butterfly doesn't fall out of the card and I want to make sure that I don't cut that till all these details have been finished because I don't want this piece to be loose so I need to collect that as a separate group and as you can see look it's coming in red and I put that up there to a group and I'll do the same to the other side check that it's all there which it is and we'll put that up to a group if we start from this side of the butterfly and produce a marquee we'll go right the way across but not collect the end of the butterfly wing can you see that we've caught, caught the last little blob but not the end of the butterfly wing and we've collected everything inside the butterfly now and we can make that a group and we do the same on this side everything except just the end of the butterfly wing and collect that as a group we'll collect my little uh, insignia down there as a group we we'll collect these two little tabs here there's one group now I'll put my shift key down again and hold the shift key down and I will marquee the second one so we've put both of those into a group now and we'll add them up there and then finally what we've got to do is collect these perforations so there's one group and now I'll hold down the shift key again and I collect the second group or the second part to make the group and there it is and we'll put that up in there to a group remember we had over 700 elements before that we were going to have to work with let's take a look what we've got now 10 that's the miracle of this approach and I've now got total control over what is cut when I want that block to cut first that's element number five let's send it across to the list I want that block to cut second that's element number four let's send that across to the list let's do the slots element number nine and then we'll do my insignia whoops we need to do the butterfly inner which is that one and then we'll do this butterfly inner as well that's number seven so now that I've cut the inside shapes of the butterfly I can afford to let the cutter go around the outside of the wing there which is number nine and I can do this one as well and then we'll do the slots hello what happened to the slots at the bottom there Oh, I picked those two slots up as part of this that doesn't matter so element number 10 is there and then finally the outside shape and there we are the whole thing is now ordered to perfection so no reversing no fiddling around we can just say OK I feel so confident I'm not even going to run it through the preview window. So I'll save the program and let's meet up at the machine. This is cutting the inner sheets for my cards or one of the inner sheets for my cards. Um, as you can see I've got myself a couple of steel blocks here set up just temporarily set up so that I can reference my sheets into the same place every time because there isn't a great deal of space available on the paper for me to play with as you will see. So all I'm doing is cutting the six slots, running down the splits between the pieces and then going around the outside to cut the papers out.
So there we are, probably about 20 seconds to cut three pieces of uh, three pieces of paper with slots in. Now this is quite nice 110 gram paper. But as you can see, I've only probably got about three or four millimetres all the way round for my frame. I've registered my piece of card. It's about 230, 220, 230 grams, and it's got a linen look on it. Um, now, what I'm going to do is to place the linen look downwards and have the plain side upwards. That way, if there's any sort of risk of slight burning on the surface, it's hidden, it's inside the card, not on the outside of the card. It's doing things in a fairly orderly fashion, it's not jumping around all over the place. I absolutely love working with card, it's almost as good as being let loose in a cake shop. Remember rightly, at the end of this cut, we will go round and we'll cut the inside part of the butterfly's wing to separate it off from the rest of the card. But I wanted to put all this detail in before I loosed the piece of card. But I wanted to put, I wanted to put all this detail in before I released it that wing there, look, can you see how it's fallen? Job done. And there's our end result, exactly as per plan and drawing. Now you saw me cutting these thin pieces of paper earlier. Well, because this is quite a delicate edge down here, I'm going to just put a like a straight edge down on the perforations to just hold that delicate part down while I just put a bend on it like that. Do the same on the other side. Just push it up a shade, not much, and then this would be printed normally. So there we have the inner liner as I said, which would normally be printed. And now what we can do is to um, put these together and to make them look nice, we can just do that to the butterflies. And there we are, one girly birthday card. So although Peter Jones is not responsible for the design of that card, he's certainly responsible for making it happen quickly, cleanly and efficiently. So I think everybody should write to Peter Jones and give him a big hug. Thanks, Peter.